Hey folks, Joseph Sabara here. You may already notice how different I look <laughs> today. Well, actually I got a haircut uh, on Friday. I went to that new barber shop in Glendale, California. It was actually right next to 7-Eleven. It was called Champions uh, Barber Shop. It's actually a really good place. But it used to be an old uh, haircut place. That was only uh, seven dollars or or ten dollars, but it, it was there for a very long time. But they have since uh, moved to another place, so now they they had to replace it with a sports barber shop, which is pretty expensive. I mean, like if you get a buzz cut, it costs twenty dollars. If you get like a cut, it's like. It could be a little more or less, like 15, I believe. And they even have other options, like they'll <clears throat> let you have a shave or or any other, because <laughs> that's how barber shops are. <clears throat> so it's a very nice place. Even though I was wearing my <laughs> brand new uh, California Angels uh, jersey shirt that my uncle gave me, yeah. Uncle uh, Louis Mendoza, <laughs> or Uncle Louis, as I referred to, or Louis. Um, but it's a very nice uh, jersey, cause cause he's always into sports. You know he, you know it's just like how he gave me the the Rams shirts a long time ago, some other sports shirts and everything. Even though I'm not much of a sports fan, yeah, but I do love baseball and basketball. I mean, I used to love these. Uh, I do love to watch them at the time, but nowadays I just don't. I just basically just go on the internet and or just watch some movies that I have. <laughs> That's and sometimes I just watch some digital uh, over-the-air um, antenna TV where I can watch all these other channels they have. So seeing that I don't have uh, cable or satellite like I used to, yeah. So I know. That's my only option. But I can also watch uh, Netflix and Amazon and all this other stuff too. Sometimes. Okay. Well, I I know. I know. I'm just I'm just getting ahead of myself. Well, I did actually finally um, watch one film that just came out uh, a few months ago, and I, I've been waiting for it for a while. So this is going to be a movie review this week. And it's simply called Us, which is the latest film from writer and director Jordan Peele, who previously directed the brilliant uh, horror film Get Out, which I really love, which was a big surprise for me when I first saw it uh, back in 2017. <clears throat> which, I gotta say, when I did do my review of that film, I sort of went a little ahead of myself when I said, you know, racism is a bit queasy. You know, I don't. I don't know how on earth did I that that came out of my mouth when I mentioned it. So yeah, it was kind of weird for me to say it, but I apologize for that. Um, <clears throat> I, I guess I was coming up with a different logic to explain through the film. Um, so, but that's probably the idea of Jordan Peele. Like he always wants to throw in race and allegories and even metaphors and all this other stuff throw in for a horror movie even if some of those uh, all these traits that's in the movie look so familiar to other films like there's a similarity to them because basically Get Out is like you know like Guess Who's Coming to Dinner meets uh, The Stepford Wives um, <clears throat> and <clears throat> I was even surprised too, because yeah, I'm gonna spoil a bit. Was that at least it had a happy ending, like didn't have those downbeat endings that we often get, especially in horror films in recent years. So it's pretty rare these days. Although they had an alternative ending that's on the Blu-ray that that was gonna be the ending they were gonna use, but surprisingly they didn't. Yeah, because I, I I love his friend. Uh, the TA officer who saved his life had, just at the end he was going after 
Yeah, the biggest uh, twist of them all was that he was going after his girlfriend. Turned out that he's part of it. Yeah, about brain transplants. Wow. Hypnotizing all these uh, you know, black people, but mostly blacks. I mean, they could be white people too. I mean, but that's just just weird, strange uh, family. Okay, well, I'm, I'm sorry. I just had to mention all that. But um, getting back to us, it's a story about a family who are being confronted by a bunch of doppelgangers. That's what they're called. They're evil twins of themselves who are very murderous. They're actually known as the Teeters. And they're going around, you know, you know, wearing their their red suits. And they're bringing in their golden scissors, and they're ready to stab them and kill them, so that way, you know, they can have their freedom, you know, to join in, and it becomes like a like an army, a team. Anyway, the movie stars uh, Lapita Nyong'o, you know, who's in films like. Black Panther, the recent Star Wars uh, trilogy that we're having. You know, well, yeah, there's going to be a trilogy with the the latest Star Wars movie, or as a Skywalker. Yeah. Um, but she's been in other stuff too. Um, Winston Duke, uh, also from Black Panther. Yeah. Uh, Madison Curry, Ashley uh, McCoy. Shahadi Wright Joseph, Evan Alex, Elizabeth Moss, uh, for those who don't know, she played the secretary Peggy in the TV show from AMC called Madman. Yeah. She was also um, she also did the voice of of the character from the movie uh, Once Upon a Forest named Michelle. Yeah, she was the, the badger. The one who got sick. Yeah. <clears throat> but she was also in films like Girl Interrupted, Mumford, Everywhere But Here, um, The Last Supper from 1995, uh, I almost said 1996, <laughs> Get Him to the Greek, All, all Come to Mind, yeah, those films. Um, Tim Heidecker, you yeah, know, from Tim and Eric's uh, awesome show. Yeah, he was also in Fan Four Stick, which I hate, but he's been on other stuff too. Yeah, it, it's like Jordan Peele just loves to cast uh, a comedian because he's a comedian himself. Uh, Yaya Ado Martin the Second, Anna Dalp, Kelly Sheldon along with uh, Noel, so they're both twins. Interesting. Uh, Duke Nicholson, um, Kari Hayward, and Nathan Harrington. And it's written and directed by Jordan Peele. Best known for Keanu, his TV series at Key and Peele, with Keegan-Michael Key, and of course, Get Out. The movie begins set in Santa Cruz, California in 1986. We meet a young Adelaide Thomas, who will later be played by Lapita Nayo. She goes on vacation with her parents at Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Yeah, it's the very famous boardwalk that's like Corny Island in New York, but quite different. Or even the Santa Monica Pier in Santa Monica where um, he actually got a carnival near the beach. Um, you get to go to all these rides and get to play all these games so you can win a prize. You, know, you get you even get to eat and drink over there with all these restaurants. Uh, they even have a concert over there too. Everything. It's the amazing place that you'll never forget. Well, Anyway, um, she was uh, also playing a game where she actually won a prize. She actually got a Michael Jackson Thriller t-shirt. 
really cool. Um, she even had uh, a candy apple. <laughs> so at the beach, she just wanders off while her father was playing whack-a-mole. Yeah, that that was the game she was playing as well. So they, so suddenly she enters a fun house. Yeah, a place where it has all the halls of mirrors around. And this is when she counters a doppelganger of herself. Her parents eventually found found her, but she was unable to speak. <clears throat> so. Flash forward to the present day, where she has recovered from her speech. She now lives with her own family that she, you know, she married uh, her husband, uh, Gabe Wilson, who was played by Winston Duke, and has two children, Zora and Jason, you know, both played by Shadid White Joseph and Evan Alex. So, she was very uh, apprehensive about the trip that they wanted to go to, where they're planning on going to the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk, the place that she remembers and had a bad experience there. But since they decided to stay over at a place that, uh, yeah, which is a. Um, a nice house um, that's just across uh, from the river because he also has a a speedboat so they're moving in and Gabe was just wanted um, the whole family to go to the the beach boardwalk brushes off for her misgivings and pressing the rich friends uh, Joss and Kitty Tyler um, which they're both played by Tim Heidecker and Elizabeth Moss, which also has their their daughters who are twins, um, Lindsay and Becca, both played by Noel and Kali Sheldon. Anyway, they met the Tyler family at the Santa Cruz the Beach Boardwalk, but they went straight to the beach. And after arriving, Jason wanders off and sees a man standing alone with blood dripping out of his hands at the beach, which it's right near the uh, the fun house. Actually, he was going to the bathroom because yeah, he was like wandering off. He just he was going to the porta potty, got out, and that's when he spotted him. Which kind of led to at the beginning when they're about to enter inside the Santa Cruz uh, beach, when they spotted a a homeless man who was in an ambulance truck because it looked like he got stabbed. So it was kind of horrifying when when you think about it. So at that rate, this might be the doppelganger. So anyway. She realized that Jason was missing, so Adelaide suddenly panics and and the family decided to leave the beach as soon as possible once he was found. So this is where Adelaide explains to Gabe about her bad experience she had when she was a child. So I'm hoping that he'll believe her. But it only gets worse when that night, after the power went out, that's when they found out that there's a family of four dressed in red and also prepared themselves with golden scissors appears all the way straight into Wilson's driveway. I mean, at first they thought it was just someone else. You know, like it might have been someone who's just invading their privacy. But, well, once they break inside um, Wilson's home and starts attacking them, that's when they reveal themselves as doppelgangers of themselves. That's where we meet uh, Adelaide's double named Red, which also includes um, Abraham, um, as well as Umbrea and Pluto. Yeah, Pluto who wears the mask. 
because even the Jason has a mask too, a Halloween mask, and he has that um, that ring lighter that he has on his fingers that he keeps snapping. Well, <laughs> Pluto actually has uh, a match, so they're actually um, doing everything that they were doing. Okay, well, this is where um, the doppelgangers suddenly communicate uh, once they meet him, because Abraham basically beats Gabe uh, with the bat just when he was about to grab the bat and, and swing at him, you know, try to scare him off. Yeah, so he was hurt and was being dragged and anyway. that's when Red was explaining to them, and this was a quote that Red actually said. But this is what she sounds like. Once upon a time, there was a girl, and the girl had a shadow. The two were connected, teetered to get her. The girl ate her food, was given to her warm and tasty. When the shadow was hungry, he had to eat rabbit raw and bloody. On Christmas, the girl receives wonderful toys, soft and cushy. But the shadow toys were so sharp and cold, they sliced through her fingers when they tried to play with them. The girl met a handsome prince and fell in love. But the shadow at the same time had Abraham. It didn't matter if she loved him or not. He, he was teetered to the girl's prince after all. Then the girl had her first child, a beautiful baby girl. But the shadow, she gave birth to the little monster. Umbrella was born laughing. The girl had a second child, a boy this time. They had to cut her open and take him from her belly. The shadow had to do it all herself. She named him Pluto. He was born to love fire. So you see, the shadow hated the girl so much so long until one day, the shadow realized she was being tested by God. That's the way she speaks in the movie. And yes, they were even doing some um, hollow noises uh, coming from their mouths. So it's kind of sort of like body snatchers in a way. You know how they, they scream and shriek with some really loud screaming noises coming out of the mouth I mean that's how scary it could be so that's what they're going for so now um, they're about to attack the family uh, Red had to um, have um, Adelaide uh, handcuffed straight to the table while Pluto was ready to uh, go with uh, Jason to go straight into the closet you know, where he actually added uh, a toy ambulance, um, you know, so in case, you know, he doesn't get locked in, you know, with all these game boards around. And then, um, Zora decided to run as fast as she can, so Umbrea will go chase after. Meanwhile, Abraham is dragging, um, Gabe around and was ready to attack him all the way straight into the speedboat, and that's where that's where the whole thing begins when you know they're trying to survive so they're trying to go after these doppelgangers of themselves you know going around killing them you know before they kill them and they're trying to find a way to escape so they did and suddenly they were going straight to um, their friend's place just to see if, if they're right I mean they were also trying to call the police but they didn't came by, I mean, they had to wait 14 minutes in, so it was too long. Yeah. Which makes you wonder, I mean, whatever happened to the police? Well, 
that pretty much shows it up. Of course, Umbrea did kill the neighbor <clears throat> by stabbing him with the scissors just when he was about to go after uh, Zora. So by the time they went straight into the apartment, they realized that their doppelgangers uh, came by and, and they were ready to stab um, the entire family, and they did. It was too late. So now we had the doppelgangers, and so they're in trouble. And they entered, and they're about to attack them with all the weapons that they got. You know. Because Azora actually bought in uh, a um, a golf teeter to to smack them, you know, killing the those two twin sisters. You know, they're going around doing all these uh, cartwheels, known as um, Eo Nix and um, Daya and Tex. So <laughs> yeah, that's. Those are names of the doppelgangers. Tex was going after Gabe, going straight into the, once again, the speedboat. It was ready to uh, kill him with uh, a flare gun. Um, <clears throat> Daya, however, uh, just took um, Adelaide, you know, just tied her up straight into the bed. So, of course, Jason took. Um, the uh, sculpture and knocked her unconscious and they're ready to escape they, they have to call the police as soon as they can but they're not showing up they saw a news report about that yes there's an army of doppelgangers going after everyone so they know they're, they're trapped but they decided to come up with their own plan their plan was to actually go all the way to Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk to go after them because you know it's their last chance of survival before something goes wrong and they want to be able to find out what's happening and why this whole thing came to be well okay well because then we begin to find out that underneath it all there's a hidden uh, facility that's inside the boardwalk that has like a bit of a that has all these rabbits uh, running around and then you start seeing like an empty room, and this is where where uh, Red actually uh, kidnaps uh, Jason, just when Jason was like going all the way back, just to see, just to control uh, Pluto to go straight into the yeah all all the burning flames for the burning car, uh, and this is where we they throw in the secret behind all this um, um, I'm gonna leave it that way I won't spoil the film because if you haven't seen the movie then you gotta go see it for yourself so I'm gonna leave it that way um, <clears throat> I'll, I'm, I'm gonna say though was that I was a, very impressed with uh, Jordan Peele's uh, direction and writing with this film he really shows that yes he can definitely do another horror film with justice and intelligence and this is what he was coming up with I mean I don't think there's ever been an actual movie about doppelgangers well except for that one uh, film that came out a long time ago in 1993 called Doppelganger yeah the title um, with Drew Barrymore which also has uh, George Newberg and uh, Dennis Christopher not a good movie, but it's a film about uh, a young woman um, who just moved from New York to L.A. who uh, wants to finding out that all the murders that's happening that connects to her, like she might be involved in all this, like she might be the one responsible for all the murders of of her mom, who was played by uh, her real mother herself. Turns out that she didn't really do all these crimes. It was really it was her evil twin that's doing all this, which happens to be her doppelganger. Yeah. So when you have an evil twin, you know um, this is going to be uh, 
it's going to lead to confusion that's going to happen. So now I'll say this: Us was a way better film than Doppelganger. <laughs> but I gotta say, you know, Doppelganger is a guilty pleasure. So if you think about it, it's one of those weird, strange films. Um, but on on that level too, it was well made, well done. Um, has a chilling score that was done by Michael Abelis, um going for that old school um, like raindrop that's hitting onto the the notes for the piano it just gives you chills it really works I uh, love the cinematography done by Mike uh, Kolasikis with editor uh, Nicholas Mansell, so they did a very good job. Um, wasn't disappointed. I mean, okay, so it did have a few issues here and there that that's all connected. I mean, there's even a twist in the movie that just goes out of place. Yeah, I, I don't want to spoil too much of that, but it's one of those twists that just didn't work. It didn't need to be there, but they had to throw it in just for uh, clarity and um, it was pretty interesting too because if you go back to the opening credits you begin to see like a, a TV commercials that's played inside the living room you know through a, a TV tube and you see all these VHS tapes around like Chud, uh, The Goonies and, and those other movies even the right stuff and suddenly uh, you spot like a, a news report from um, Cow 11 News, and then, then they show a, a campaign called Hand Across America, which they had a scene in the movie where, which this is one of the, the biggest ones, was where you see the entire gang of doppelgangers um, joining hands together, and they started to spread around uh, the entire uh, coast through America. Now, for those who don't know, uh, Hand Across America was basically a campaign for for the human chain that um, was a charity to fight against uh, hunger and homelessness that's happening to, to everyone. Because this was a big um, problem with, uh, with America by having homeless people, you know, going, staying in the streets in a very uh, dirty environment so this was a problem so they're trying to find a way to uh, fix that and it's and this has been going on for years and, and decades I mean with with homeless people in fact uh, especially in LA too I mean yes uh, you know I do spot um, some homeless people around they bring in their tents so they stay in you know through the streets Especially the one in Eagle Rock, uh, I, you know, I spotted some tents uh, hanging around on underneath the um, the freeway ramps. Yes, I seen them. It's terrible. But um, they're still around, by the way, um, hand across America. But it's it's been remembered. Uh, but it was a campaign that started that where it has 6.5 million people holding hands for 15 minutes to attempt the human chain. So that's what they were doing. So I, I guess Jordan Peele, who remembers this uh, when he was a kid, you know, he thought this would be a good um, reminder of that. So I guess it was using that as a, a metaphor, an allegory type of thing. Uh, but they also show the uh, the commercial for the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk, which that's what told the story. And then after that, you see the you see all these rabbits around. Yeah. Oh, I, I also forgot that there was also an orchestra. You know, you hear like the chorus, you know, chanting as you can hear on there. There's even the song uh, "I Got Fives on it. Yeah, that rap song. From the 90s, yeah, I remember hearing that song, you know, 
Uh, my cousin started listening to that song a lot, uh, so I remember that. It's nice to hear that song again after all these years. Uh, uh, performance rise. Um, I thought Lupita Nyong'o did a an amazing job, you know, playing uh, Adelaide uh, along with um, her doppelganger Red. Uh, Winston Duke wasn't that bad. I mean, give him first some some comic relief in there too. Like he does come up with his own jokes, even though, though some of them were pretty lame. But I guess it's just the way he acts. And he has his own doppelganger too, Abraham. Then you got Shadib, Wright Joseph, and Evan Alex. They were fine. Uh, uh, which have their own doppelganger, Umbrea and Pluto. Which Umbrea basically has a weird smile on her face. And Pluto just wears a mask. A creepy mask. And all that. And of course, Elizabeth Moss was very good too. Um, even though she's sort of unlikable, I mean sort of like a bratty type, a rich um, <laughs> girl right there, but you know how she is. Um, and so is Tim Heidecker as Josh Tyler, yeah your typical type of guy, but that's what I expected. So. <laughs> okay, but they were good, I mean, yeah they did actually had a reference to Home Alone because they're saying about setting up traps and which I thought that was pretty, uh, I gotta admit, uh, that joke was kind of ridiculous. It was like, Zora didn't even know what Home Alone is. Because <laughs> Adelon actually says, no, you just did not reference Home Alone. I mean, come on, jeez. I mean, we're in 2019. I think everyone will know what Home Alone is. It's the most popular film to date. came out in 1990. You know, Macaulay Cogan was a big star at the time, you know. You know, it had sequels that follow. <laughs> so I'm pretty certain everyone will know what Home Alone is. It's, a, it's on Blu-ray, for crying out loud. They also had a digital copy and everything. <laughs> so, whatever, man. Seriously, Joe and Peele. Because you wrote the screenplay. <laughs> And I guess they also had a lot of references in the film, too. Like, for example, uh, Jeremiah 1111. Yeah, which is a quote uh, from him. That, therefore, this is what the Lord says. I will bring them a disaster they cannot escape. Although they will cry out for me, I will not listen to them. Which that, that led to when he saw the 1111 on the alarm clock. And... And all, all these other references too, like they mentioned about the Lost Boys and, and of course Thriller, which I just mentioned earlier. The, and of course you see the Jaw shirts, you see a Nightmare on Elm Street VHS tape with Goonies and all that. A everything, they're all in there. Even the opening felt more like The Shining too, the, the, yes, the uh, Stanley Kubrick version. That's based on the Stephen King novel, which, yeah. And yes, the teeters were referred to them as Americans. <laughs> okay. Um, but it's really interesting. So, I was, um, I, I really, um, I think mean, it's one of the better horror films I've seen in recent years. Uh, at this rate, this year. I mean, granted, I saw Mandy, which I love. I saw It Follows a couple years ago. I loved that one. And I know there's other horror films like The Babel Duke. And, and of course, uh, The Belko Experiment was as underrated. I still haven't seen uh, A Quiet Place nor The Hereditary. Even though... It's from the same company that gave us The Witch, which I've seen. But, um, who knows, I'll probably check them out someday. I just want to get ahead of myself with other stuff, so. <laughs> so, anyway, that's us. And I give the movie four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.